Well, 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 the superiority of the Boston Celtics may have been overstated. Boston needed a late three-pointer to force overtime and avoid an upset in game one against the Pacers. Is this an indication that this series is going to be closer than many of the experts predicted? Well, I'm going to give you my thoughts, but before I do, i got to tell you about a promotion we have available at both WagerTalk and SportsMemo.com. Using the promo code JS3DAY, you can get three days, all access, all sports, for only 29 bucks with myself. Why would you be interested in that? Well, I've cashed in six of my last eight premium NBA plays for clients, 14 of my last 20. I am the number one NBA handicapper in 2024 at Sports Memo. I'm the number one all sports handicapper the last 365 days, 500 days, 750 days, 1,000 days over at SportsMemo.com. So use that promo code, get that three-day package, and you'll be glad that you did. Before we get into the picks for game two, I want to thank everybody who tuned into the last video. We did easily cash our play on the Pacers first half team total over. Uh, we almost got 500 likes on the video. I really want to get up to 500 likes, so please smash that like button. I'm a little bit concerned that if we don't get up to 500 likes, the bosses are going to send me down to the minors, and we don't want that. You guys want me coming on here, giving the free picks every day, cashing those winners? You smash that like button, ring the bell, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Let's talk about game two. Boston will be a nine-point favorite, and the total will be 224 and a half. So the total is just a few points higher. Uh, the spread's very similar. Boston opened at nine and a half in game one, got bet up to 10. Now we're looking at a, a nine for game two. And a lot of people will be looking at uh, the close game in game one. The, the fact that Boston lost uh, game two in the second round and, and in the first round, I'm not going to buy into that too much. I think Boston had their letdown in game one. They got a little bit of a, a warning. So I, I really don't expect Boston to come out flat here like we saw in the previous two series. Unfortunately for me, uh, I have a bet on the series handicap at Pacers plus two and a half games. And narrowly losing game one doesn't do us any favors in that department. But if you didn't get in on that bet, you look at the price now, Pacers plus two and a half games is plus 130. I think that's an even better bet at that price. We were never really counting on them winning game one in Boston anyways. Another one I'm looking at is uh, 18 to one on Boston to win game two and lose the series. And if you think that's counterintuitive, I will explain it like this. Uh, the longer this series goes on, the more opportunity there will be for one of the pace or for one of the Celtic starters to get banged up, one or two of the Celtic starters to get banged up. Right now, Indiana has the advantage with the deeper bench, and uh, they're not really reliant on one star player. I mean, Halliburton, obviously, they are somewhat reliant on him, but they have Siakam. They have several guys that can step up and score score for them. Whereas uh, the Celtics can't afford to lose anybody right now, really. And uh, the longer this series goes on, the, the more that Indiana can drag it out, like we saw with the Knicks, the more they'll have a, a puncher's chance, let's say. So I, I, I'd say sprinkle maybe a, a quarter of a unit on that Boston to win game two and lose the series. Uh, my focus isn't going to be on the side for game two. I'm going to focus on the total. We saw a very high scoring game in game one. And the fact that it went to overtime had nothing to do with the total going over. It was 117 to 117 in regulation, and it was going over regardless. Uh, even if the Celtics missed that last shot to tie the game, it still would have been well over the total. Uh, the score in the first half was 64 to 64. Both teams went over their team total. I'm going to look at the team total for the Boston Celtics to go over in the first half of uh, game two. We had the Pacers team total in game one. Now we got the Celtics team total in game two. Uh, like I said, game one was extremely high scoring and we look at the shooting percentages. It's an indication that it, it wasn't because they were hitting their shots. It was because of the pace at which they were playing. Uh, the Pacers do lead the playoffs in shooting percentage, 51% uh, from the field in the playoffs, 38% from three point range. In game one, they shot 53.5%, so slightly better than their average. 
but below their average from three-point range at 37%. And the Celtics, they're shooting 48% in the playoffs. They shot 47.5% in game one and well below their three-point percentage as well, 33% from beyond the arc in game one when they're averaging 37% in the postseason. So at this pace, these teams are both going to score points. I like the over, but the play is going to be on Boston. Team total over 60 in the first half. If you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you've got anything to say to me, even if it's nasty, you hit me up in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can.